John, is everybody here? Yes, before I can stand, all members are present. Okay, so um, we're going to move on to the citizen communications. If anyone has something to say, uh, general comments, uh, you have an opportunity now. Please deliver your comments to three minutes. No comments? We'll move on to the consent agenda. There's an approval of the minutes from the regular planning and zoning commission meeting on January 14th. Uh, all in favor? Aye. That takes us to the staff report. John? Yes, ma'am. Uh, just two quick items. I promised to give you some development activity detail, uh, and I thought I'd run through some items that uh, you might find of interest <clears throat> as far as uh, 2019 versus 2018. Uh, first of all, on the residential uh, development side, uh, we had a pretty busy year, uh, all things considered. Uh, we had a, a total of 90 residential permits that were issued. Uh, not all of those obviously for new homes that involves residential related permit activity. Uh, that compares to 86 a year before, so we were up slightly about 4%. Uh, as far as new homes go, we had four new home permits that were issued last year compared to three uh, in a couple of years. I guess probably three or four years ago was our peak year, at least in recent history. Uh, but uh, we again, again continue to see new homes coming in this year. The activity's picked up uh, even more, so I think things are looking good. We had a lot of remodel activity last year. Uh, home additions, uh, not much, uh, you know, really minimal. Uh, pools, fences, we had 11 permits versus nine. Uh, total improvement value as far as residential permit activity goes, we had $2.7 million uh, worth of permit activity compared to 2.6 the year before, so about a 5% increase. Uh, on the commercial development side, these numbers are a little bit skewed. Uh, because of the wastewater project, we require permits to be pulled uh, for any type of connection to the wastewater system. So your numbers are going to be up a little bit uh, as far as uh, your, your commercial activity is concerned. Uh, new buildings, uh, we didn't issue any new commercial building permits as far as uh, for new commercial buildings. Our building remodel, uh, we actually were uh, down just a bit uh, compared to the prior year, about 50% in fact, from 4 to 2. Additions, we were up. Uh, we had two, none the year before. A certificate of occupancy is pretty much flat compared to the same year, about 20 either way. Uh, sign permits were down just a bit, and the total commercial permits were up uh, 102 to 87 the year before, about a 17% increase. But again, I think you attribute that to the permits that were issued uh, for the connections to the wastewater system. As far as subdivision and zoning activity is concerned, it really was a pretty busy year for that. You all obviously felt some of that. Uh, with your meetings. So concept plans, we had four new concept plans for subdivisions uh, that were approved last year compared to zero the year before. Uh, minor flats were the same, uh, nine each year. Uh, major flats were up slightly, 17%. Uh, the total number of new lots platted went up uh, about 73%. In large part, you can attribute that to sanctuary as far as them coming in on the clear plat. 356 new flats, or uh, new flat lots were, uh, were approved. Uh, versus 206 the prior year. Annexations, we had five. Uh, as you know, uh, four of those were related to the school properties, uh, the, the two right away annexations, and of course the two school property annexations, and then we had the Rosemont annexation that took place at the end of the year. In zoning cases, we had three zoning cases compared to one the year before. So it was a you know, somewhat of a busy year as far as development activity goes. We started off the year pretty quick as far as residential permit activity is concerned. Uh, and from a subdivision standpoint, uh, we're working with several uh, folks right now uh, to get their submissions prepared to, to come to you all in some cases. In some cases they won't because they're considered minor class. But that's all we've got as far as the activity report. And as I said, we'll try to keep you updated throughout the year uh, to let you know where we stand on that. The only other item I had on there is from a staff report standpoint is, as you know, we have a planning and zoning commission member training that is scheduled for next month, uh, specifically on the 10th. And uh, try to accommodate schedules. We want to move the start time back a bit, uh, and we're going to shorten it a little bit too. Uh, one of our members has a commitment he's got tonight at the tent that uh, we really can't get into. Uh, so we're going to start that training at three o'clock in the afternoon here. Uh, it will be open and available to the public, uh, and it'll run from three to six. And if that one member has to bail out a few minutes early, that he shouldn't miss much uh, towards the end of that. So it'll be a three-hour training. And it's going to be done through the COG, which I think you'll find it's, a, it's interesting training. Uh, and we're going to try to do that on a regular basis. Probably bring the Board of Aldermen at some point and do that too for them. We'll see how this goes first. So that's where we are. Does that work for you all from 3 to 6? At the 10th of February, which is a Monday? Okay. Then we'll proceed with that and get it scheduled and we'll get it posted. That's all I've got. Okay, um, we'll move on to the public hearings. 
Um, first public hearing is to consider making a recommendation to the Board of Aldermen regarding case DA-20001, a proposal to zone the Salado ISD property located on Salado School Road and Thomas Arnold Road in Salado, Bell County, Texas, as a public facility, PF. John, do you have anything to present? Just to kind of set the stage, this is a process that we told you we were gonna go through once the annexation was complete. Uh, our properties in the city are supposed to be zoned, so this property just recently was brought into the city. Uh, it's the Salado ISD properties on Salado School Road and Thomas Arnold. Uh, it includes uh, the, what I call the inner circle properties. That's the elementary school, the intermediate school, those schools there. It also includes some of those outer properties uh, that are on the uh, north side of Salado School Road. Uh, so the appropriate zoning designation says it's school property, public school property is public facilities. So that's our staff's recommendation as far as the zoning designation for this property. We received some phone calls from some of the adjacent property owners inquiring about what was involved, uh, making sure that we weren't gonna be setting up zoning for large things like cement plants and things like that. We assured him no, it was, it was school property, it would be school property for, for some time to come. So uh, and that's what's before you tonight. No no opposition voice at all from the calls we've received. All right, with that, I'll open the public hearing for this item 4A. Uh, any comments? Yeah. Come up here, uh, state your name, okay. address, and please open your comments to three minutes. My name is Jim Raymond. I live on 1006 Slave School Road. Yeah, if you would stand on that mic. Thanks very much. My name is Ken Raymond. I live at 1006 Slave School Road. I've talked to Warren Knight, who's an attorney, who was a city attorney for uh, Temple and Austin, and he thinks y'all might be stretching your limit on the process of annexing the Slave School Road area. If Barney Knight's retired, he's referring me to another lawyer that specializes in annexations. Uh, I just, I don't know what all entails of being brought into the city other than the fact that it's gonna cost a lot of money on each homeowner over there. You have not been annexed into the city. The only annexation that took place was the school district's property, not yours. None of the properties on Salado School Road were annexed into the village. Only the school district property and the roadway. Okay. Uh, why did we get an annex notice? Actually, there were there were notices sent out. There were public notices that were posted on that. I the understand, but I understand what the, the annex process is on. This is a zoning process, and the reason we sent you a notice for the zoning process, even though you're outside the city technically, is to give you a voice if you had a concern or if you wanted to find out information about what was going on with that property itself. Uh, we don't legally have to send you a notice in a zoning case if you're outside the city limits, but we do that as a courtesy just to involve you. The annexation process took place several months ago. Uh, and it was publicly noticed and, and went through all due process and public hearings. Okay, I'm just looking at the lawyer. No problem. All right, thanks, Mr. Sure, Raymond. Thank but please know you're not in the city. Okay. And if you want to, you can petition us. We don't have the ability to go bring you into right. the city. Okay. It only is by volunteer. Okay. This just made it sound like I was being brought in the city. Oh, no, sir, you're good. Okay. You're good. Thank you. Yes, sir. I just got a question. I'm John Burrow. We just bought the property off of Thomas Arnold Road, uh, right next to Johnny's and the Salado. So, is this a zoning impact? That's zoned as commercial. Does not impact have anything to do with you know restricting businesses or anything? Does not impact your property at all from a standpoint of restricting what you can do on your property. Okay. It only relates to the school district property, and it limits the use on that property to public school. Other facilities. Just so you're clear on the school district property, it's, it's the schools themselves, it's the soccer fields behind the schools, it's the one house that's in there, and the bus barn. Those are all, that's all that is. That's all to the north of where I'm talking yes, about. Absolutely. Oh, that's the south. Yeah. Nothing south. You're already in the city and you're already properly zoned. Okay. No problem. Unless you'd like to change your money. Oh, you can do that. Yes, I'm Darlene Walsh, 1001 Mill Creek Drive. Just wanted to clarify, uh, Don, if you could explain public facilities. Uh, could any of that property that we're zoning now, public facilities, at some point in future become, I don't know, uh, a village office, uh, a wastewater plant? Uh, uh, what 
you know, in other fire district, fire uh, uh, district uh, police department. I mean, could it be it, it other does, public facilities? It does. A wastewater plant would be a different issue because there would be some there would be some other requirements that would come into play if, if there was ever a desire to do something with that. But it could be a city. It could be city offices at some point. The school district could, could put its headquarters over there at some point. The, uh, the groundwater district could put an office over there at some point. The county could put an annex over there. It's public facilities from that standpoint. But when you get into talking about treatment plants and things like that, there will be some other public processes that would probably play in that process. Well, there is that, that uh, creek sort of that goes through where the soccer field is, I think. That there are no plans to put a wastewater plant anytime in the future at that location. So, or any village offices? Or? No, not at this time. No. Okay, thank school, you. As far as we're concerned, it's school district property and will be school district property. They own the property, so if anything happens on that property, they're going to have to agree to whatever's done on that property. Mm -hmm. And I doubt seriously there's any interest on their part at this point to sell that for a wastewater treatment plant or to sell that for a county annex building or to sell that for City Hall. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you, as, as a member of the school board, there are no plans to do any of that sort of thing on the school property. Okay. Now, I mean, but you could later, it's maybe 20, 10, 20 years down the line, decide to do something. Yeah. Just wonder. It has to be a public facility. Mm -hmm. Public. A hospital, a clinic, you know. Yeah, it could be that too. Very much so. It's a public hospital. Mm -hmm. It could also be redone. Could it also be, uh, I don't know, do they call it low income housing public facility? No. 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 Uh, that's residential. Yeah, if it was sponsored by a town. No, no, it's residential. Okay. It's not public. Thank you. I, I got another question. Maybe it's a school board question. Is the school board going to continue to use? I know they're building new schools. I'm, I'm not familiar with the development going on around here, but is, there's a new school being constructed. They have a new high school, I believe, right across the street from us is the elementary and the middle school. Middle school is going to go move over to a new facility. Is that right? Or is no, that, that, that That's going to become the junior high. That new facility is going to okay. become the junior high where all the facilities are now that you're talking about, which is the, used to be the elementary school, the intermediate school, and, and the middle school. Okay. That's all going to be the elementary school now. Okay. That's right, the so elementary school. school. And the junior high is the new building and then the high school yeah. over in the middle range. Traffic over there is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. so so I don't that, that, that's one of the reasons yeah. that the, the, the new junior high will put this relieved considerably once you move a lot of that over to the new building. And it's back and outside of the Yes, sir. Any other comments? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Classification is proposed, and that's public facilities. Uh, again, no opposition expressed from anybody up to this point that we've heard. Okay, with that, I'll open the public comments. Yes, Doc. I've asked this question before, and I'd like to ask it 
speed study on Williams Road in the coming weeks uh, to look at establishing a formal speed limit on that and to look at reestablishing the school zone speed limits and look at some other traffic control measures. And this is totally self-serving on my part. I want to drive my golf cart to my doctor's office, and right now I can't. So I would doubt, I would, let me just tell you this, I would doubt very seriously that the speed study is gonna justify a 25 mile hour speed walk okay. speed zone on that Just ask it. I'm gonna keep trying. Now, if you get sidewalks out there. Are we gonna get sidewalks? That's a great segue into the next item on the yeah. agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, next, we're going to discuss and consider issues relating to the development of a street impact fee ordinance. Katie and I have talked a little bit about this, and, and now that we've finished dealing with the parkland dedication piece, which goes to the board next week, uh, we think the next apple we want to eat is, is street fees. Uh, right now, our, our current ordinance is not. It's not bad, but it's not good, if that makes any sense. And, and in the sense that it, it kind of lays the predicate for some improvements uh, in the ability to require a developer to make some improvements. Uh, I think, though, it is geared maybe more towards the larger developments, the two 300 lot subdivisions that come in, the subdivisions that develop, uh, you know, one-way trip generations of 200, two, or excuse me, 2,000 vehicles a day or more. Uh, and it's not really uh, providing the village with the protection of, you know, uh, what maybe the smaller size subdivisions, in addition to the larger size subdivisions, uh, what type of impact they're going to have on your, your overall uh, transportation infrastructure. Uh, what we've got in place right now is an ordinance that, that says, I believe, that if your subdivision is over, uh, I guess, over 200, uh, 200 lots, and, and if, it's, uh, if it generates over 2,000, uh, one-way trips uh, a day uh, that they basically have to go do a traffic analysis, a traffic impact study. And that traffic impact study looks at an area uh, within one mile of that proposed development and then uh, you're supposed to look at uh, that impact study and, and determine if the existing infrastructure uh, levels of service would be impacted adversely as a result of that development. And if so, it does give the village a little bit of a leg to go in and say, you need to do this. Trans translation, you know, you may need a turn lane in off a major roadway going into a subdivision, something along those lines. Uh, what a lot of cities are moving in the direction of is establishing what are called impact fees. Uh, ours is, is, deals with target situations, mainly larger subdivisions and their potential impact on the area. Example being sanctuary had to do a traffic impact analysis. Uh, you know, they're doing that now in an updated version that for tech stop for this new, new section that they're going to be starting work on. Uh, but when we talk about traffic impact fees or street impact fees or roadway impact fees, uh, it's a little bit of a different beast because it, it tends to address uh, all types of developments, not just those at a higher range. And uh, what it does is it comes in much like our wastewater impact fees and it develops a fee structure, a maximum fee structure, based on land use assumptions and based on capital improvements that have been identified that need to be made to your thoroughfare system. Uh, and it tries to establish a fee to recover the money from new developers uh, that can be put into uh, basically a pot, of, a pot of, of improvement money to go towards improving the streets to mitigate the impact of any new development in your community. Uh, they can be a little controversial. <clears throat> Obviously, uh, the development lobby was rather strong in Austin, and they were able to uh, adjust the statutory boundaries for setting those fees, uh, and uh, to try to deter, I think, probably the creation of those fees. And I don't say that in a negative way towards them; they're, they're certainly working in their interest. Uh, but that said, there is a process in statutory law that allows you to go and create street impact fees. Uh, you have to go through and, and, and do a study, much like we have to do with the wastewater impact fees. Uh, and, and you'll go out and you'll hire a consultant that will come in and, and, and go through. And, and the good news is we've got land use assumptions and, and data that have been developed uh, in the way of street improvements. And we've got the land use assumptions from your comp plan update uh, and also from your wastewater study that can go towards that. And that will reduce the cost of whatever impact fee study you would need to do. But you're still talking about a study to set the impact fee up. It's probably going to cost you in the ballpark 
I would bet someone in the neighborhood of twenty thousand uh, dollars to, to get get the fee. You would set up an impact fee advisory committee that would work, uh, you know, with you know with the consultants in, in the establishment of the fees. They would make a recommendation to the board of aldermen. The DMZ would be involved, I'm sure, in that review process. But there would be basically a maximum fee that that study would determine that you would be allowed to collect per dwelling and, and subdivision coming in. And then the board would have the final decision on whether they want to charge that maximum or whether they want to come in at a lower fee. Like in the wastewater impact fee in the beginning, they came in under that originally set fee. In this situation, they'd have that ability to do that from zero up to that maximum fee. Again, with the idea of generating money to go towards capital improvements relating to infrastructure improvements on your thoroughfare plan uh, and, and on your city streets and things along those lines. It's a little bit, it allows for a little bit more of a comprehensive approach to dealing with the impact of development on your city streets, as opposed to what we have in place right now from, from our ordinance standpoint. Ordinance standpoint looks at kind of the, it looks at kind of the, the elephant in the room uh, type subdivision, the big guys, but it doesn't really account for the, you know, 50, 60, 70 lot subdivisions. Uh, and I think that's the thing that we see more of as opposed to the two, three, four, five hundred 500 lot subdivisions, at least right now. Um, so what we want to do is put this on the agenda tonight and get your thought process on, on how do you feel about the idea of levying a fee per dwelling unit on a subdivision? How do you feel about the concept of going through the study process? The process in setting a, 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 a street impact fee, a roadway impact fee, uh, is probably about an eight month process looking on the long side of it. And, and where the process comes is this, you've got to go through, there, there are a series of mandatory meetings that have to be held, uh, both with the Impact Advisory Committee that's appointed, which I would assume if we did this, we would have PNZ representation on that committee. Uh, but there's a series of required meetings with the Impact Fee Advisory Committee, and then there are a couple of required public hearings that have to take place, or public meetings with the Board of Aldermen to take place. And in that situation, normally it takes more than one or two meetings, because again, these, these can get a little controversial. Uh, there are not many cities in this area uh, that, that have impact fees as far as uh, roadway impact fees. Uh, and, and Colleen is one of those that has been wrestling with the concept of impact fees. And the board, from what I understand, their, their council said, let's hold off on them. But now my understanding is there may be an end around being run over there where we're going to try to resurrect them and, and have the discussion again as far as that goes. Uh, Round Rock has just adopted uh, an impact fee. Uh, a lot of your metro areas deal with those because they're feeling the pinches of the growth and they're, they're understanding the need to try to recover some of those costs of the existing folks. So uh, yes, sir. Um, and, and you talk about fees that are uh, a long-term effect of the increased traffic flow. Uh, what about the initial effect of construction vehicles and, and all of that coming through subdivisions to get to areas like this going right. It's considered part of that. It's considered part of that cost too. The analysis is based on trip typically, but but I think it, the, the the impact fee itself tries to look at the overall impact of development. So that's got the, the yeah figured in as opposed to what we have in place right now, which only deals with the actual end result home and the end result user driving on the right. streets in the larger subdivision. Uh, you know, it's, we have what cities, in place what we have now is what, what cities, you know, have operated with for years, you know, and, and it's an escrow system to the point where you try to identify the improvements, who makes the improvements, they can put money in place and, and save and go from that standpoint. Uh, it's a mile out, but the reality of it is this, we all know that a subdivision, when it comes into town, has a greater impact on streets than just, than just those within a mile of the development. I mean, it's, it's, you know, and, and it's going to get worse as, as we see more growth in this area. So, yes, sir. Um, two questions. First of all, we would not be improving, any money raised with this would not be for streets outside the village, correct? Right. So we would be collecting money from the EPJ to improve streets within the village. It's how you want to approach it. Okay. You're saying it could be, it could not be. 
the other question is, would we ever be able to, and this is. I can't make improvements in the ETJ. No, I know, I know that. That's why I was asking the question. So we're going to get to use it to repair Susan Trail out here. Or wherever we want to um, and the reality I say, here, here's how you have to look at that. The reality of it is, if you go on what we have in place right now, if it's within a mile of the service area, so within a basically a mile around. Yeah. Okay, the second question is, do you perceive that you, and I know this is so preliminary, you probably can't answer this question, but do you think that we would be able to raise sufficient funds to be able to impact the quality of streets in the village, which is a big issue uh, from this kind of thing? Would it actually help us uh, to do that. In other words, are we talking about twenty thousand bucks over a year? Or are we talking about two hundred and fifty thousand bucks over a year? No, uh, you're talking with subdivisions and roadway costs. Roadways are expensive, and, and the factor that goes into those. But can we collect enough from a fee? And what I'm asking is, would here's, there, here's would there the, be enough money to make it worth? You know, you're talking about controversy. This is going to be controversy. Here's the, the, the here's where the rub comes. The rub comes with this, and that is. You know, you're you're getting money, you're putting money aside to go towards road improvements, and you may be improving the roads that are substandard already. And so the, the issue is, you know, you, the developer paying for the impact he has on the road is one thing. The developer paying for what currently is a substandard road is another, and you can't do that. It's, it's kind of like we talked about with the park deal, and that is, you know, they, they pay for the impact they have. You can't collect money pay for the pre-existing shortfall. But we could use the initial chip seal the darn stuff over again, can't we? I mean, what are we going to be able to use the money for? You could do chip seal, you could you might be able to do overlay. It's so just, it, it will help us. But the question is, would we raise enough money to, to provide us with enough help to offset the controversy that's going to come? And I'm not against this at all. I think that, that I think that's a million dollar question. Let me tell you why I think that's a million dollar question. Because you don't know what's coming five to seven years down the road in the way of development. But I'll also say this, if you don't get a fee in place and plan in a smart fashion, you may miss the boat as far as the ability to collect that money to, to, to deal with the impact. The other thing you have to be careful with when you set these impact fees is this, and that is you also don't want to create a barrier towards development. You don't want to send the signal that we don't want your development. You know, you don't want to create that to the point where you, you, you choke off any potential future growth and development because growth and development is important to a community, you know, and, and you know, I, I think you can send, and I think that's one of the concerns that I think has come up in some of the neighboring cities that have had this discussion about impact fees in general, is they don't want to create the situation to the point where it becomes not effective, not cost effective for a developer to come into a community. You so want the right type of growth, is what you want. Are we talking about a thousand dollars a unit or five thousand dollars? I'm not going to hazard. I'm not going to haphazard. Okay, yes. that's fine. I, I will tell you that. I will tell you that it, it is it, again. It is it is a it's a situation that you need to understand that they look at an analysis of your overall infrastructure, they develop a capital improvement plan based on that analysis of the infrastructure. And we've talked about the fact that this city right now with its existing infrastructure has several million dollars worth of improvements okay, on roadways. I, I get it now, now. What you're saying is this is not arbitrary. We're gonna do a study and figure out just like we did with the land values on the- uh, Absolutely. Okay, great. So, and, so we're, we're, talking, we're talking about any new development after this ordinance is changed or approved. Nothing retroactive to anything that's already here or been approved. These are all new developments that are looking to play out. And I've seen other cities who are doing this um, do like fees on a percentage, uh, like working into the full value of the fee. So plans that are already in the works don't have to pay that full amount. They'll do a 30% of the fee for the Stages. first couple of years, and then 60%, and then the full within about five years. So it's a staged implementation, you know, which which is which is 
Seems fair. Yeah, it's a viable way to go back. Because the things, if you start, you think parts are expensive? Um, I had a couple of questions. Um, this is, I read the government code chapter 395, and I couldn't tell if this is something that is applicable only within the city limit, or if we can do this to new subdivisions or development in the ETJ as well, or if it applies. There's no question it applies within the city limits. The, the, the issue comes down to the applicability and, and, and those, those subdivisions coming into the city. In our situation, it's kind of like we dealt with on the parks. I can't spend the money outside the city, but the fee at some point will be applicable, much like the wastewater impact fees are applicable to an entire service area other than the city, but we're obviously not gonna charge it to anybody who's outside the city right now. You're setting up a fee that would, that would address an impact area, but you would, you would limit it to those areas within the city limits. Is that, is that and then a big part of the, methodology and the requirements for this and, and the study is a capital improvements plan. Do we currently have a capital improvements plan in Toledo? We have a street assessment that was done in, in 2019, which was the first full cost street assessment we've done that determined it graded all of our streets and it graded the value of improvements of all of those streets based on the type of improvement we wanted to make, be it chip seal or be it going into an asphalt <coughs> Uh, and, and those costs range from you know, a little over what, a couple million to several million. But we don't have anything about flood control, drainage, other facilities, water, roadway. Not, not at this time. You do not have. The city has never done a flood study, which it needs to do, and we talked about that. There's there's been no flood study done in this community to look at overall drainage. Uh, and and I, I use the word. I don't want to use the word flood. I think drainage is a more appropriate word to use. Uh, You'll do some drainage improvements with any street improvements you make, but when we're talking about a drainage study, we're talking about something that actually looks at the installation of, of true drainage structures and, and be it storm sewer, be it open cut channels, those kind of things. That needs to happen. Okay, and that's a requirement for this. Um, and would that be done under that $20,000 like professional? You look at it. It'd be, a, it'd be a separate study that would come with that, but you're going to look at those type of improvements in the assumption process and in, in, in the analysis and the development of the capital improvements plan. They'll look at those type of things and put, put estimates for those type of costs. Okay. So, what we're, what we're looking for from us tonight is this discussion, obviously, but we're looking for us to make any recommendations on advisory committees or anything. Well, no, just kind of, we wanted to float the idea and start the process because, again, it's going to take some time to, to get the process going. If there's interest in looking at something other than what we have on the books today, which this would be a more comprehensive approach than what we have on the books today, uh, is there interest in doing that? And if there is, then what we'll do is we'll, we'll continue the process of putting together maybe an action plan that you can look at and then we can make a recommendation to the board to fund the study to get the process started. I don't want to scare you on the eight month eight month time window. I think it can be done sooner than that. Uh, but that's that's we've got some of the stuff already done, I guess, from a jump start standpoint, uh, from our previous work that we can incorporate. But uh, it takes a little bit of time, and it will be controversial. There's no question just because of the cost involved. Staged or not, staged helps, but staged or not. The more I've looked into this, I think as Salado grows and becomes, you know, a thriving entity in Central Texas, these sort of studies and the, what is the capital improvement plan are things that we need to address and street impact fees or the possibility of them are part of that, but it's a bigger issue than just the impact fees, possibly. We're talking about the infrastructure and maintaining it as it grows um, and budgeting for that. Um, I, I, think it, I think it's something that we should recommend to the board or, or that we should pursue um, if that's our alley. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm at y'all's leisure, so. Um. Yeah, you know, the, the, she mentioned the springage, <clears throat> and I'm not advocating this, but I will tell you, it's, it's, springage impact fees are very common. 
and those are fees that are typically applied across the board in the city, not just on new development. But they're, they're typically applied across the board, and there's normally a, a, a residential fee that goes towards that to pay for major drainage improvements and things along those lines. Again, I'm not advocating that at all tonight, but I think it's in the back of your mind is something, as Katie said, from a long term planning standpoint, something to think about. So, what kind of recommendation would you like us to make? I guess tonight was just to give you guys, you know, a virgin look at it and to see whether it's something you're interested in us preparing an action plan on. And then what we'll do at the next meeting is we'll bring you a formal proposal for you to consider with some cost estimates involved in that that you can make a formal recommendation to the board one way or the other. I just wanted to approach the topic with you. Katie, I think mean, Katie's dead on on this as far as thinking. And, and the problem is this, if you wait on these type of things until it's too late, it's too late. It's too late. And, and, and you know, you're, you're getting hammered right now. And obviously we will try to stretch and push as much as we can to make applicability outside of the ETJ. That would be our goal. <coughs> Has a follow up on the drainage issue, which is a big deal. Can we somehow get all of that done at the same time? Sort of thing. Meaning that we study our roads, uh, study our drainage situation, and see what's going on there. The, the drainage study, the drainage study is. is different beast in the standpoint that you have to look at, at a watershed when you, when you study the drainage, which means we have to look upstream and, and how far upstream we go, quite frankly, determines in the large part of the cost of your study. But example being the problem that we've experienced over on Stagecoach Circle, in large part are the results of drainage off the interstate coming off that track next to the school. And, and, and we see that and we know that. And, and there are issues like that that you have to look further upstream. You have to look at, at growth upstream, channel capacity, those type of things before you can come in and start determining how to size uh, structures, drainage structures, what type of drainage structures you need to put in. Uh, this city does not have curb and gutter. Soon will on one street, on Main Street, but. Uh, so one bite of the elephant at a time. <laughs> Yeah, and I, the drainage study is something that, I, that we've had some discussions with the county to look at maybe looking at, at something a little bit more regional uh, that can incorporate us. There's, there are plans to come in at some point in the near future, we believe, from what we're hearing, uh, to come in and look at remapping this community from a floodplain standpoint. And part of that, part of that remapping process is going to involve the drainage study. And so I think that, you know, hopefully we can, you know, coordinate and piggyback on that and, reduce our costs and get the data we need to help plan for the, the drainage structures we've got to work on. Uh, the day is going to come, and I'm just telling you right now, this city has not taken a strong stand on drainage, but the day is going to come where we've got to take a strong stand on drainage on new development in this place. But we just can't let people build, you know, build subdivisions and let them throw their water everywhere. They've got to manage their flows and, and, and they've got to regulate those flows, both from a flow standpoint and from a water quality standpoint. With all the new subdivisions, there's even water left. Yeah, that's true. And we're potable water and non potable water. Are we allowed to talk or not? It's. Um, sure, come up to the mic if you want. I don't want to do that. I just figured we're like this. There's not very many people here, but. It just helps to get it on the record if you come up to the mic. Oh, I was just going to throw you all an idea that I mean. I, Modeling, a lot of these companies you're talking about will come out with a model. They'll model the entire area so that it's also, because you can get a document and it's next year it's not any good. Yep. But you need to come in with more of the data that is reactive to where you see a, a 500 home development happening. You could actually plug that in to see what that does. Absolutely. As opposed to just having a book that sits on your table. On drainage as well as on yes. water quality. That's correct. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. no, I didn't need it for the record. It was just I'll sit out there. Since you've opened it up, Linda Reynolds by myself in Santa Rosa. <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, they did. They didn't. You could have said no to you. <laughs> uh, I like to piggyback when somebody gets depressed and says, uh, two questions. Number one, uh, does the sanctuary pay a road impact fee? And then help me out. I don't know if they all have a copy of it already. Where in our ordinance is the road impact fee we already charge for subdivisions? We don't charge a road impact fee for subdivisions. What we charge is we charge we, we establish an analysis process for certain size subdivisions, and that analysis process will determine whether there will be required improvements to be made. Uh, and the subdivision pays the developer pays right. that. Right. Does the sanctuary have to pay for their analysis? They're doing that now. Yes, so we're not paying for that, and they actually they do a second. But would they be subject to an, an impact fee if they ever do start building buildings? If it is a if it's a section that's already platted, no. Okay. If it's a new section that's platted, I don't know that they've got an exemption on, on those guys. So this they, is really they weren't they weren't exempt on impact fees for wastewater, so I don't know that there's an exemption. I have to pull it specifically in and then look at it, but I don't recall seeing something that exempts them from any type of traffic impact fee. So an impact fee, if you spend the money to do that, is going to just it's going to make developers stay away between the sewer five thousand dollars per unit and another several thousand. It's really going to, it's going to. The sanctuary's already set; they can do anything anytime. But the other developers, it'll kind of make them go away, won't it? Could be too expensive. Well, it's a thought. The anyway. thing that, well, no, and it's. I hear what you're saying, and that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. And that is, you've got to be sensitive to how you set that fee, how much you set that fee, and what you communicate, and, and how you're going to use it. Uh, you can make it so restrictive that it sends, it sends the wrong message. Again, I don't think we're trying to send a no growth message. I think what we're trying to send is we want the right type of growth in this community. And, and you can do that and, 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 and potentially manage that process and still recover fees to address that growth. Uh, it's just a process we've got to go through and, and feel it out. I, I'm just before we. I'm just for before we spend twenty thousand on that. I'd love to see a drainage or water or flooding study. Um, it seems like that might be safer for everybody. Thank you. All right. Um, so, uh, do we do we want to ask the village staff to pursue an action plan for street impact fees? Drainage fees and or a capital improvement plan. I'm not sure that, that that's in order right now. It isn't just supposed to be a discussion. It wasn't supposed to be a right. recommendation or anything right. like that. But no, we don't have to make any recommendation. I might keep this as just a FYI kind of meeting where we're now aware of what some of the items. Well, I mean, I think you're Katie, proceeding on things anyway. You're proceeding. Well, okay, Katie, what Katie's asking is, do we? Do you want to basically tell us to, to put together an action plan to bring you to eventually make a recommendation to the board on pursuing or not pursuing? So all she's asking for is basically the development proposal. Uh, yeah. You can take that first step. Yeah. It doesn't mean you have to be committed. It means finding out. Anything to educating ourselves. Yeah, I think it needs to be a first step in, uh, to, to see how far we need to pursue this. Yeah, it means finding out the associated costs, <coughs> if there are any. Is there a motion in order? No. Just no suggestions? Yeah. Well, I would suggest we ask John to provide us with more details on this thing. Develop a proposal for you to consider. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, once you do that, we can then make a, we can make a, a motion to, to advance it to the, to the 